So, you know what's actually really funny here is that there's a kid on the internet, I wanna pull this up, who actually had a comment to make about how I'm not a car guy. So I'm gonna take a moment to respond here because I feel pretty offended by the comment. I don't usually get offended by any comment that does not include my penis size, but in this case, I am pretty offended by this child, uh, and I call him a child because I think he's like 12 years old. Uh, he says, I am not a real car guy, and then he goes on to say, I'm just gonna read this, painful to watch, you buy cars for one reason only, and that's status, and you can knock your website and watch the description, real car guys hate people like you. Man, this is like so hurtful. Like you see, for one second here, I, I was really in pain because I was not loved by other car men of some sort based on this person who's been blocked three years ago and yet still keeps coming back looking for new ways to comment. So, you know, two things came to mind today and I, I wondered to myself and I said, okay, am I really a car guy or am I a money guy or am I a little bit of both? And so I wanted to take a second to talk about this in this particular video because people have a really bad misunderstanding of what exotic car hacks is in many segments of it. You see, exotic car hacks isn't a car flipping site. We actually don't teach people to make money on cars. As a matter of fact, a lot of our teaching is highly focused on the ability to own an exotic car and enjoy it without losing any money. Because you see, for a very long time, I lived my life like a normal person who didn't make that much money. And as a result of that, I had to be very careful with the money I spent. But I was a diehard car fan and I've always owned nice cars since my like 16th birthday. So I worked hard, I put my money aside and I bought cars. And many times I made payments on these cars in the earlier days of my life, right? And so I had a, a lot of cool cars, none of which looked like this, but instead they were cars that looked like, you know, an E55, a 911 Turbo, uh, like, like cars that were basically the more generic cars you would buy under 100 grand, right, at the time. And so what happened is every single time I would buy this car and drive this car and sell this car, I would do what conventional people do. I would lease cars, I would go to uh, dealerships and trade cars in for the next car. And what I realized is that every time I was losing 10, 20%, even if it was six months of driving. And so as a limited person at the time without a lot of funding, I realized that I'm just going to bury myself in debt if I keep trading out of cars in negative equity. And so one incredible thing happened once. I bought the best 911 Turbo I could have found and I drove it two years instead of six months and I actually made some money after driving it so long. And I realized to myself, I said, wow, why is it that I could do that on that car, right? So a really new chapter of my life started where I decided that I would no longer buy cars that make me lose money, but instead buy cars that would allow me to at least enjoy them without having a financial burden. Now, fast forward this to like 10 plus years later, I've done this with over 500 plus cars, so I decided all of a sudden, you know what? I am going to go ahead and actually teach other people how to actually do the very same thing, and that's when Exotic Car Hacks was born. It, it became basically a center where individuals who love exotic cars or cars can basically come and enjoy some of the finest cars in the world without actually losing any money by learning three key components. First off, the network you have matters a lot because the network you have in repairing these cars can save you tons of money. Two, and like things on insurance can be cheaper if you know what to say, what to insure and how to insure it. And then the other part was also what you buy matters too. It's not just about buying an exotic car, it's about buying the right exotic car that will retain its value and certainly be immune to the basics of depreciation that happen elsewhere, right? Something that perhaps a 12 year old holding his dick on the internet that's, you know, gazing in my car collection perhaps can't understand, but the majority of people who actually are in the means of purchasing things and have real money, not monopoly money, can actually understand. If you're smart and you learn how to make money, you also don't piss away money, unless of course you're trying to prove who has the biggest cock, and it certainly isn't me. So I'm going to tell you that if that is the contest, I'm probably going to lose if you're black. If you're not, maybe you have a chance, but we'll have to see. You know, it's like they say, it's not about the size, it's about the motion in the ocean, or I think that's what they say, but anyways. So, the, what happened over the years though is that I decided that with this resource center, it would help other people not make the same critical mistakes I made, which almost made me give up my passion for cars. So today, these are just some of the cars in my collection and I've shown these a hundred times over, but I would argue that I am more so a real car guy than a lot of people for two key reasons. One, I built some of the sickest and hottest spec cars anywhere. 
Like by far, I have some of the hottest examples of each cars I own. As an example, I may not have the largest or most expensive car collection in the world. However, I would argue this is probably one of the top three SVJ Roadster specs globally anywhere for any reason. And again, this is just an example of a car. I would argue that this is probably one of the best looking Senna's ever designed in color outside of just the carbon one that's usually here as well. But this is probably one of the best colors. And this unique MSO combination is something that, again, I take a chance on because I can spend my own money buying these things, right? And I would argue that between modifying my cars and how OCD I am with design, taking care of them and everything else, I would argue that I'm a real car guy. I think where people get confused in how exotic car, car hacks presents cars and how I portray cars and where they get butt hurt and their dreams and hopes get shattered is basically where poor people interact with two aspects of my brand. The first one is poor people usually don't like being told that something they love or dream about is total trash. And you see at Exotic Car Hacks, I promised myself as an automotive journalist around the values of cars that I would also review cars for what they really are and not what manufacturers have asked me to suck their dick, right? To be invited to the next event. You see, I've spoken to two really big YouTubers that review cars that you know really well, and they love everything yes. they review. It's so yes. great, and the seatbelt's great, yes. and this is great. And I asked them, I was like, how do you like that piece of shit? And they tell me, well, if I don't say that, I don't get invited to the next grand opening. I don't get invited to the next unveil. So in order to get invited, I have to suck and basically pr pretend that I love everything about the car so that I can get invited again and I can make content and make money. And this is the big difference about automotive journalism, my ass, and reality of a rich guy that owns his own cars and can actually talk shit about the car based on the fact that it's not really a good product. I have argued a hundred times that perhaps some cars are outstanding cars, but they're just not outstanding to me. And here are the reasons why, and here's how they compare with other cars. And if you're a real buyer, if you're someone with real money, you really appreciate that. However, if you're a $2 ass clown who aspires and dreams of something you'll never reach because you just don't want to work for it, you're probably going to get really hurt because deep inside you're like, I love this car and it's talking down my dream, right? But this is the reality of being a car guy or not. But being a car guy does not come down about your hopes and aspirations of dreaming about cars, but rather your ability to actually purchase them because it supports the manufacturers that make them. So when I put my own million dollars to buy this or my own $2 million to buy that or my own million dollars to buy this or my own 500K to buy that, I am putting my money in the line and testing out a product. But I'm also supporting an industry that continues to make product because of people like me. When you mentally masturbate on YouTube thinking about a car that you want people to review positively, you're not actually doing anything except mentally masturbating. So you're not participating in enabling more cars to be made in the future. You're basically doing nothing. You're holding your dick in your hand. So in this particular case, this is the, the first reason people don't like me is because I'm very direct and I don't speak well of every single car I own. Many times I diss them. And in many times you should be very, very understanding of the fact that actually me talking shit about a car I own hurts my ability to resell it later because there's a lot of people that watch my channel and understand that I speak very frankly and openly and they go, I was going to buy that car, but now that PJ said it's trash, I'm going to reconsider other cars. Now, I may also be selling that car next, so it may not be necessarily something I want to do to down talk it. But I've always said that I wouldn't sell out just to the idea of money. And this is the power of being rich pre doing a YouTube channel is I don't really give a shit if a manufacturer likes that I talk down at them. I don't really care that a manufacturer likes that I speak well about their car or that I point out its flaws or that I call it trash or I or talk about banging hookers in the back. I don't care. And that's the power of having money. When you have money and you have a worldview, you can impose that worldview in how you want the world to exist and you don't have to mentally masturbate watching other people. So that's reason one. Reason two of where the channel is often misunderstood is because people will see me getting in and out of cars fairly quickly and say all I care about is making money. So to be clear, I don't make money off of every single car I drive. And in many cases, I order a lot more cars than the average person. Like this last year, I had about 16 cars on order and another 14 for the first quarter of next year. So when you start seeing all these cars, you go, well, where are you putting them? And that is the problem. I have limited space and I only keep the best of the best. Example, I have, you know, I have two SVJs, two ultimates. So if you look at two ultimates and two SVJs, why do you need four 
Aventadors and you really don't. So ultimately I keep one and I may sell the other and so on and so forth. Now, why do I do that? I do this because there is a monetary component to this where you don't have to necessarily lose money from one car to another. As an example, let's say for example that I want to drive this Senna right here, right? And I want to buy this at sticker because at the time that's what you had to pay. So let's say I paid a million one for this car, right? Which I think I paid below sticker, but let's assume I paid that. Now let's assume someday I had a really good opportunity to buy another Senna and that's in the second Senna I bought while I didn't intend to drive it, I could have made $400,000 on the second Senna. So I would buy that, make the 400 grand and buy my basis down in this one. Meaning that not only I get to enjoy this longer for free, but I get to literally move the profits and ensure that I'm not that I'm in a good position on this particular car. And you see, this is basic economics that people understand. They see a ton of cars, they see cars coming, cars going, cars coming, cars going, and they go, well, basically PJ is almost like a dealership. He's buying cars, selling cars, but I'm really not. First off, I don't operate in, under a dealer's license. I pay my taxes on the majority of my cars. Every car here has a Florida registration. And two, the other thing I would tell you that's really important to understand is that there is an opportunity to make money in anything you do. And once you get very good at it, you can nitpick and choose what you make money on. And while I may order, let's say 20 cars in a year, I will keep probably five to six of them in a permanent collection while about 15 of them will probably get flipped if the material isn't that good. I actually put my money on the line if buy cars to review because I will not review a car I do not own. Or I specifically state at the beginning of the review that I do not own that car and therefore I have limited experience on that car but I'm comparing it here to a car I do own. This is important to note because as an example, I'm not I, I don't consider myself uh, poor enough to drive an RSQ8 when I have six Urus's before. So I would never buy an RSQ8 personally for me, but I wanted to compare one to an Urus, so I had someone bring me an RSQ8 and I used their RSQ8 against the Urus, where I actually gave more credit to your RSQ8 for its price point than the Urus, but nonetheless, I still wouldn't be stupid enough to put my money in it. That said, it doesn't mean that it's a bad product or I won't buy it, it just means that in my status, I don't want to buy it. So status does matter because it's very hard for someone to go from a place of having $3 million cars, $2 million cars, $1 million cars, and then start to drive 100K exotics. So like, why would I want to drive an R8? Why would that make me a real car guy? It wouldn't, it would make me a broke car guy. There's a difference, right? There are two completely differences. And even Reggie here behind me uh, agrees to me, which is, you know, something nice. He doesn't usually agree on things. Uh, unless we're talking about only fans, girls or something, then he, we, even on that, we don't really agree, but sometimes, sometimes we agree. If there, no? Okay, all right. Apparently we don't agree on that either. You know, he likes some Chinese or something and uh, I don't, so we don't get along. Like okay, so apparently I like crackheads and he doesn't. So anyways, thank you for sharing, Richie. So back to what I was saying, bottom line is you're a car guy based on your ability to afford the cars you want to afford and your ability to actually own them, enjoy them, and do as you please with them, which is why I consider myself more of a car guy than just about 90% of the population, but perhaps I am not as much of a car guy as a 12 year old sitting in front of a computer mentally masturbating may think. So there you have it. If you want to learn more about how to become your very own car guy so you don't have to mentally masturbate about cars on the internet, click the link in the description and learn how to get in and out of exotic cars without losing any money. And of course, learn how to join our ecosystem and community so you can save thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars on depreciation and of course, save that on insurance and save that on shops and save that by having the most incredible network of exotic car buyers in the country, okay? So click the link there. I'll see you in the next video for exotic car hacks, but in the comments, let me know, am I a real car guy or am I just a world-class dick? Put it in the comments, like, subscribe. I'll catch you in the next video for exotic car hacks.